Hello, my name is Kamil and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about screencasts. I'm going to share with you four tips on how to effectively work with screencast footage inside Premiere Pro. If you also have a talking head part of the video to accompany your screencast, I'm going to show you how you can know in your timeline when to switch between talking head and screencast. Then I'm going to show you how you can clean up your screencast footage because for instance, there may be some information on the screencast that you don't wish to disclose with your audience. So I'm going to show you how you can conveniently hide it from the screencast and then as a final tip I'm going to show you how you can actually organize your timeline in a way to make it more flexible and more reusable if you're for instance zooming in the same part of the screen repeatedly. So without any further ado let's get started. Okay, so right here we are in Premiere Pro and there's an example from one of my previous videos. So here, as you can see on track two, we have the screencast and if I hide it on track one, I have a talking head right here. So I'm switching between one and the other. And if we look at the talking head part of the video, you can see that sometimes I'm looking in the camera and sometimes I'm looking down at the computer when I show something. And if I'm at the screencast part of the video, I would like to see if my head is looking down at the computer or if my head is looking up. Because if my head is looking up, that means that I'm talking to the camera. If my head is looking down, that means that I'm sort of talking to the computer and effectively showing something on the computer. So what I usually do is just select the screencast clip, go to the effects control and drop the opacity to something like 60%. And then as you can see, if I scrub through, I can see both the screencast and my head. So this is a very easy way. I don't even need to listen to the audio. I instantly know which part of the video should be talking head and which part of the video should be the screencast. But there is one caveat. If I chop up my video like this, and by the way, there is a pro tip. If you want to make a cut that cuts through all of your video and audio tracks, you can hold the shift key and then perform the cut. And that way, all of your video and audio files will be cut in the same exact place on your timeline. So now if I bring back this to 100%, as you can see the entire screencast is revealed and then if I advance to another part of the screencast it is still 60% of the opacity because the change in the effects control doesn't propagate to all the occurrences of my clip on the timeline. So how to actually amend this? Well let's actually back up and after changing the opacity we're going to nest this clip. So let's back it up and now I can actually nest this. So right click and nest. Okay and then if I cut the nest I can always go back inside and change the opacity of the underlying clip right here. Also, it's a good idea to disable the animation for the opacity because we don't want any keyframes here. And as you can see, I can cut it. For instance, I can cut it here. And then wherever I am, I can go back inside. I can change the opacity back to 100%. And if I go back, you can see that all parts of my screencast are back on the full opacity. So this is exactly what we want. And also if your screencast is in a nested sequence, you can actually do more stuff like cleaning up the screencast right within the nested sequence. So you don't actually pollute the main timeline with some additional layers that you use to clean up your screencast footage, which I'm about to show you right now. So let's advance to tip number two, which is cleaning up the screencast by covering some sensitive information. So right here we are inside the nested sequence and we have the original screencast clip. And for instance, what I usually do is I hide the top right corner of my screencast because there are a bunch of icons here, the time, my name, etc. And I usually hide this stuff, but I want to keep the left part of it because there is a menu here. And sometimes in my tutorial, I need to click on something on the menu. So I want the menu to be shown, but I want the right part to be hidden. So how can I deal with that? Very easily. All you have to do is just go to the project window Click on this icon, new item, and then add a color mat. You can click OK, and then you can take the color picker. And actually what I usually do is I'm matching the color with the color of the status bar. So I'm clicking somewhere here on the left side of this icon, then hit OK, confirm. Then I have this color mat, so I'm just dragging it above, making it to the entire length of my clip. And then, of course, the color mat is covering the entire clip. So I have two options right here. I can use the mask and I can use the crop effect. And in this case, the crop effect is actually easier. But for the educational purposes, let me show you what you can do with a mask. So you can go to the effects control. And from right here, if your color mat is selected, you can take the pen tool. Also, now I have to drop down this to like 50% so I can see some margins around so I can draw the mask. And then just draw a mask somewhere here. 
And then you can move this mask, you can animate this mask even, you can feather this mask. But you know, you have to draw it, you have to click four times, you need to make sure that this is aligned. So actually there's an easier way if you want to hide something that is in the corner of your screencast. So let's back it up. And instead, let's go to the effects and let's search for crop. And let's drag the crop effect to the color mat. And right here, the crop effect has four main properties, left, top, right, and bottom. And this is the percentage. How many percent from each of the edges do we want to crop out? So obviously we want to crop out something from the bottom. From experience, I know that I need to crop something like 97%. And then from the left, and this basically makes my upper right corner hidden and the menu bar on the left is shown. So if you need to hide something like your name, your email, your password, your credit card information or whatever you are actually showing on the screencast, you can easily do it with a color mat, with a mask or with a crop effect to make it visible only in the part of the screencast that you wish. Now let's talk about what can you actually do if something unexpected happens on your screen that covers the vital part of the screencast and you wish to hide it out. So right here I have faked a notification that pops up in the upper right corner. There is just this white color mat that appears here for this portion of the clip and then it disappears. It's like, you know, imagine as some kind of a notification appearing on the screen right in this moment. And this is unexpected while you are explaining something and you don't just want to cut out this part of the, of the video, right? So what you can do is hold the option key or alt on Windows and duplicate your entire screencast. Make it above the original footage. Right here I need to place it above the color mat because I needed to actually cover it. And now what you want to do is align the playhead with the moment where something unwanted happens on your timeline that you wish to hide. Then select the duplicate clip of the screencast, right click and click on add frame hold. What it means that the entire clip from the right of the playhead is actually this exact frame duplicated for every place on the timeline where you put it. So you can make the right part as long as you want and it basically holds the frame, the, this exact frame where the playhead was when you added the frame hold and you can use that to mask out the part of the screen that you wish to hide because there was this notification or something happening. So what you want to do, you can actually delete the left part you can crop the right part, you can delete this because you only need the cover up for the duration of this uh, notification in this example that happens here. And as I scrub through, you can see that you don't see this white box. But right now, this part is obviously covering the entire screencast. And maybe you were showing on the left bottom side of the screencast that you don't wish to just hide with the previous frame of the screencast. You only wanted to hide where there was something on the screen obstructing the view. So you can also use the crop tool right here. So you can use the crop drag it to this part and then you can use the crop and dial in the exact amount of crop that you want. And then as you can see if I hide this original you can see that the frame that is being held here by this clip is only appearing as a cover-up for this unwanted thing that happened on the timeline. Super easy, very convenient, I use it a lot when I get like an email notification, a text message on my phone or whatever. So now we are back with the original sequence. So what I want to show you right now is for instance if you are zooming in the same portion of the screen repeatedly you can actually use an adjustment layer and you don't have to type in the exact scale and position every time you want to zoom in into that part of the screen. So let's go back to the project window and let's go to the new item and then adjustment layer. Okay, take the adjustment layer and drag it somewhere that you want to zoom in. And now in the adjustment layer go to the effects and search for transform. Now drag the transform to the adjustment layer, go to the effects control, scroll down, and then you can actually use the scale property. As you can see, if you drag the scale to the right, you are zooming in. For instance, let's zoom into 150%. Let's change the vertical position to somewhere here and let's change the horizontal to center out on the program window here on my screencast. And if I scrub through, you can, you can see that I'm zooming in. But you probably want some kind of cool animation of zooming into the part of the image. You don't want just those abrupt changes. So how can you animate this? Very easily. So what you want to do is just align the playhead with the start of the adjustment layer. Activate the stopwatches for position and scale. You can move those a little bit to the right. And then of course in this position you have to reset to the default, which was these values. And as a personal recommendation, what I usually use, I use five frames to perform my animation. So if you want to advance by five frames on your timeline, you can actually hold the shift key and click the right arrow. And then my timeline is advanced five frames. So I'm just gonna move these keyframes to this position 
And if I play it back, you can see that I'm zooming in, but the zooming in is kind of abrupt, you know? There is no motion blur. So how can you add motion blur? Very easily. If you have the transform effect on the adjustment layer, you can just select the adjustment layer, go down, uncheck the use composition's shutter angle, and then input the 180 degrees, the shutter angle that produces the most natural motion blur. And then if I play it back, check this out. If I play it back, nice motion blur while zooming in. And this is the thing that you cannot achieve if you're not working with a transform effect, if you're just working with the motion effect, the default one with the position and scale. So make sure that you are using the transform effect in order to get the nice motion blur while zooming in into the image. And now that we have an adjustment layer, we can just copy it. For instance, we can just hold the Alt key, drag it here. And now on this part, if I play this back, you can see that I perform the same punch in into the same portion of the image. So you can use adjustment layers like this to make sure that you are punching into the exact same position and exact same place on the screencast that you wish if you're coming back to some sort of a toolbar or something else if you're making like a tutorial or a software review. So this is very, very handy. All right, that's basically it for me for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, make sure to hit the like button down below. It really helps me out. Also, consider subscribing to the channel because I upload new videos pretty much every single week and I usually focus on photography tutorials, filmmaking tutorials, sometimes drone flying tutorials, sometimes some vlogs or travel videos, but basically everything revolves around things you can do with your camera. So if you're interested in any of that, definitely consider subscribing. But like I said, that's it for now. Have a good day. See you next time and bye-bye.